Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be repotting a big vanda that I have growing in a cement pot. So this is my vanda tricolor. I had it out on the patio and the wind knocked it over, cracking the pot. So ever since the pot cracked, it started dropping leaves and the leaves actually feel a little dehydrated so I am gonna go ahead and try to remove it from the cement pot and I'm going to put it in a different pot so what I'm gonna do to make it easier so that I can bring up the roots is get it completely saturated I was not the one that potted this um, I actually think it was my mom that did this and uh, that was a long time ago she's no longer with us she passed probably in 2010 so we'll come out right in there I have a feeling it's just lava rock Should be good enough. Bring the hammer. Interesting. Look at that. All up in there. So I'm gonna put it in that black terracotta pot that's glazed black on the outside should be all right and I'm going to put some stakes in there what I'm actually going to do is use all the broken concrete and put it in with the vanda might as well use it so I also bought some cinders they're more of a chunkier cinder they're probably like about an inch um, what do you call it? Inch to three quarter size rock, so I may or may not use it. We'll see. So this is what I have. There's a lot of good roots. I'm probably not gonna even worry about removing all the dead roots because I plan on just sitting in the pot and using all the broken cement pieces just to get it propped in there and stable. Okay, so what should I use for the bottom? in Hawaii so it's probably this will probably give those geckos a place to live. That's fine. I'll just say gecko poop is some sort of fertilizer so I am just thankful that I didn't find any centipedes in here. We get some centipedes here in Hawaii. I think that should be good enough. So let's put 
that big old thing in there. So I have to do a voiceover because the audio in the next few clips is pretty rubbish because of the storm that's coming in. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to try to place the, van the Vanda into the pot. Um, trying to get majority of its roots in there, but if there's some hanging out, that's fine. Um, I was also trying to talk story here and let you know how I started Orchids. Um, I started Orchids because of my mom. We would actually visit nurseries together and buy orchids. The reason why she loved orchids was she's from the Philippines and she just loves the flowers. So when I was, I could have been like around 14 years old, she would take me to the nurseries and we'd pick up like cheap orchids for $10.00. Majority of the orchids at that time were dendrobiums. So once the vanda is pretty much in the pot, I am putting three stakes in here. What I'm pretty much doing is building a cage for it. I'm going to get some twine and have all those stakes meet at the top. That way I could, if needed, give the vanda some support. But yeah. Uh, uh, my mom would take me to these nurseries. There was one in Wailea, Maui, in particular, that had white dendrobiums. They would rent them out to the hotels nearby. And there was also a nursery here in Kahului. My mom found him because he sold his orchids to the Long's Drugs here, which is affiliated with CVS now. It's a drugstore. And they would have primarily dendrobiums. And I think that's where I first saw my an antelope type of dendrobium. But the name of that nursery was Tokunaga Nursery. I'm not sure if they're related to Roy Tokunaga, but um, it was, a, what's his name, Hiroshi Tokunaga? Yes, it was Hiroshi Tokunaga. Um, so he actually showed me how to pot up some dendrobiums and how he watered and showed me around his nursery, which was really nice. Um, so yeah. So what I did was put some twine on the top of that and I'm checking the orchid to see if it's stable and secure in its pot. So I give it a little jiggle. Seems okay. And what I'm trying to do is try to drain, I'm trying to drain out whatever dirt or whatnot's in, left in the orchid and hopefully have it drain out. So Hiroshi would, Mr. Tokunaga <laughs> would show me how to pot orchids and how he took care of them, which was really nice that he took time out to show me. So... After high school, I pretty much left Maui and went to Seattle. So I'm looking at the cinders here, and I'm thinking that they're really chunky, which is what I wanted. That way, it'll still allow air around the roots of the Vanda, so I think I'm going to go ahead and use them, which is what I'm saying here. So, But yeah, um, after high school, I went to Seattle, and I pretty much... I don't know, grew up there trying to figure out life and myself. And I was there for about 10 years. And I didn't move back to Maui till, till 2010 because my mom passed from cancer. Uh, so, yeah. So here I am just putting in some cinder rocks into the pot there, hoping that it'll make the banda more secure in the pot. So from 2010 till 2016, I had a lot of cleaning up to do with the property here on Maui. 
because my parents didn't have a chance to take care of the plants and whatnot. So that's when I began to fall in love with gardening and orchids again. So I started collecting. But then in 2016, we moved back to Seattle, which was a interesting little hiccup, but I'm glad we went. And then we moved back in 2021. And here we are now, just trying to get my collection back to where it was. Okay, so this is where it'll live. On my lanai. So I haven't run drip yet to my patio plant. So what I'll do is get some three quarter tubing and run it at the base here and have it go all the way to my shade house. It is windy today. And put it on a separate timer. And what I'll do is I'll put maybe a misting. I don't know. Either a micro sprinkler or a mister. And put it in the pot. That way I'll get some water every other day. For, uh, I don't know, maybe eight minutes. And there's my grammatophyllum, so the grammatophyllum stays right there. And I'll run drip to both of them, along with my fiddle fig, my philodendron, and some of my hanging plants. I'll put them on drip as well. Because last time we were out of town and my friend forgot to water them, so they kind of suffered a little bit, but they were fine. <laughs> Here's that hibiscus, that rum rascal, double hibiscus, huge, beautiful flower. Look at that. As it ages, it turns lighter and lighter. The flowers last about three days. I made cuttings of this plant, so I'm excited. So what I'm doing next is I'm preparing some Super Thrive. It is a quarter of a teaspoon per gallon. So I am mixing that up in this two gallon watering can. I'm only gonna mix up a gallon though. And then I am going to add some water in there. So what I am planning to do is I'm going to water the Vanda with some Super Thrive. I'm going to do it in a couple passes. I'm going to wait probably 30 minutes in between until the can is empty. So... That is what we're doing. I'm not adding any additional fertilizers to this because I already have a weekly regimen of fertilizers that I'm doing. So that's it. So I'm probably going to water it in a few increments to get it some, a chance to soak up all this good dirt. Okay, so I'll do that every once in a while. That way I know for sure that this Vanda is saturated. It's super dry. Okay, so I think I'm going to end it here. Um, if there's anything else you want to know, just drop me a comment. I know I've got a lot of people asking if I could do nursery tour, tour tours, <laughs> nursery tours, but unfortunately, most of the good nurseries are closed to public, so I'm working on it. Um, there's a few of them that go to our orchid society, so I'll talk to them and see if they can sneak me in there. Um, but for now, thanks for watching.